for zombies, man. Shoot those zombies. Hello? Hello? Are you there? I really could use some help right now. Hi, welcome to the breakdown of my latest video, Ollie and the Zombies. In this video, I will show you the process of how I created this artwork and trying to give you some tips along the way. I won't go into detail of all the steps that I took. It's just an overview of the whole process. I will only be focusing on the second part of this clip where I look down over the balcony onto the street. The first step is to gather some reference. This might be the most important step to define what style you want. I was going for a Middle East kind of city. I collected some moody scenes for inspiration and some references that I could use to build out the scene. I started out blocking the scene. This was pretty straightforward, just basic shapes and blocks to get the idea of how this uh, scene was going to look like. I already had a camera angle in mind that I was going for. The idea was to be looking down from a balcony onto the street. I also placed in a basic sunlight so I could see what the mood was going to be. After this I started the modeling process. I'll skip to this part a bit because it's boring and tedious and I really don't like modeling. So I just modeled basic things like towers, edges on buildings, balcony railings, those kind of things. I soon realized that this modeling was going to take ages, so I borrowed a lot of assets from Sketchfab and other creators. We'll see this later in the video. I started modeling the buildings and realized I didn't have the time and this scene was going to take a lot of time with all the modeling and building out of this whole thing. So unless I wanted to spend ages modeling, I just had to go the asset route. I started looking around on Sketchfab and found a lot of models that would fit my scene. So I used a lot of those assets to save some time. Although I used a lot of assets, I also did model uh, own stuff, so it's about 50-50. After all the assets and modeling, I got this. It's the basic scene. At this point, I was yeah, becoming more motivated because you're not 100% sure if something's going to work out. And once you get to that point that you see it's going to look great, then it's fun to continue with it. I decided my scene needed some billboards. I downloaded an Arabian looking font and created some basic signs in Photoshop. They are all in English, but you cannot read them anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I added them in Blender as an emissive material using the images as planes add-on. It looked pretty good. I played with the strength a bit to get the desired effect of the light coming off the billboards. The scene still felt empty. So I gathered a lot of assets and created a lot of assets as well, or some of my older projects that I used again in this project. But I figured out it needs a lot of work and a lot of assets and modeling to create a city that looks like it's actually being lived in and has gone through a zombie apocalypse. I also already added the Hummer that the main character was going to stand on. So after all that hard work, you got something like this. I was not 100% convinced, but I knew there was going to be a lot of post-processing and things happening, so I just kept going. I wanted to work on the animation of the scene, so I tried to create a little flag that was blowing in the wind that says help on it. It's just a basic cloth animation pinned down. I used a force field with a small radius to move around so it looks like the flag is blowing in the wind. After this I placed it in the scene and realized it was pretty far away so no one's ever going to see it. But you get yourself a nice moving flag. Same goes for this thing. It's a ribbon thing blowing in the wind. It's pretty small and no one's ever going to pay attention to it. But it's a good and fun exercise. I wanted more debris in the city, so what I did was just create an empty Photoshop document and just brushed around with some colored strokes and placed them as PNGs in the scene and it looked really good from afar. Continuing with the animation, I just downloaded some models and animations from Mixamo and used them in the scene, placed them around and made the scene come more alive. I used several Mixamo animations, so such as this one and the other one crawling and some walking animations. I also downloaded some models from Ian Hubert's Patreon. These are just the basic models and I used inverse kinematics to rig them so they move a little bit. 
but once again you can barely see this in the final result so i'm not sure if it was worth it after this it was time for photo scanning i photo scanned myself holding a gun and i used this um, in polycam to generate a 3d model this is not a real gun by the way it comes out of uh, sketchfab it's pretty detailed and it was pretty good already there were small parts missing or some inconsistencies but overall it looked uh, very good just some uh, minor cleanup was needed and since it was going to be in a distance it doesn't really matter this model was also rigged with inverse kinematics it was a little playing around with how i wanted it to move i managed to get the gun parented to an empty and everywhere I moved the empty, the gun would point. So it was uh, pretty satisfying. I then recorded the animation of shooting around and then exported it to the other file. I did do some minor tweaking with the gun moving later on. It actually looks like he was shooting. And I parented a light to the vertices of the gun. So the only thing I had to do was to turn up the brightness every time the gun was firing. After this, I created the zombie. I used the basic photo scan from earlier for the body and then just use the noise shader to create blood stains and those kind of things. The body itself was rigged with the Rigify add-on. Then came the process of animating. I just recorded myself doing my very impressive zombie walk and tried to match move what I was doing in a video. It took a lot of time, but eventually I got a pretty decent zombie walk. I did the same thing for the grabbing zombie. This thing didn't turn out too great, so I kind of decided to wing it, but it was good enough for the scene. After this, I created the shader so that every time I duplicate this model, uh, it would look different. This saved me a lot of time to model several zombies. The only problem was that they would have the same motion, but I was hoping you wouldn't see this in the final result. Then it was time to play around with the Boyd simulation, see how this thing was uh, looking. The first results were pretty good. I was uh, happy how this thing turned out. It could probably be better, but it would take a lot of time to tweak and I didn't have the time for this. I then placed the Boyd simulation in the main scene and it was looking very promising. After that, I was done with this whole Boyd and zombie thing that I decided to model a great looking ashtray. I placed it in the scene once again for no one to see it. In the final stages I was lighting certain objects and highlighting some things to give them more attention or draw the viewer's eye to it. In the end I think I maybe added a little too much lights because I heard when you add a lot of lights this can really slow down your render times. Now it was time to bring out my super green screen set. It was kind of a fun experience because I used OBS to do a live preview what the camera was seeing. So I could see if the virtual set was matching the real set. So I didn't have to worry about perspective later on. Then it was time to record my cat doing some motions, looking down, those kind of things. Until I was satisfied. Once I was happy with my footage, I brought it into After Effects to key it out added it into Blender as a PNG sequence. Later decided to remove the PNG sequence from Blender and add the cat in the compositing stage. I had a little bit more control over the shadows and highlights when I added it in After Effects. After this, it was time to add all the other elements such as smoke, fire. I added an explosion, some haze and an overall color correction. So you did all the work, you added the audio, and now you got something like this. So I hope you liked the video. I hope that you liked seeing how I completed this project. I know I skipped over a lot of steps, but, but just to keep the video as short as possible, I left a lot of things out and tried to focus on the more important stuff. Thank you for watching my video and see you soon.